Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving a very exponential, very complex exponential equation. Okay, we have square root of 3 plus i to the power z, z is a complex number, and that equals 2 plus 2 times the square root of 3 times i. So we're going to solve for z values. Is there going to be a single solution or is there going to be more than one solution or is there any solution at all something to think about right all right let's go ahead and take a look at this problem but before that i just want to remind you that if you're new to complex numbers go ahead and check out my lecture videos and of course a bunch of other problems that i made on this channel this channel is specifically dedicated to complex numbers and if you have any suggestions problem suggestions let me know in the comment section down below but keep them simple, okay? Don't make it too complicated. All right, so let's see how we can solve this problem and maybe these kinds of problems. First of all, this is an interesting problem because we have z in the exponent. So z is the unknown, we're gonna solve for z. In other words, this is a hard problem because maybe a medium problem, because we do not know which power to raise this number to to get the other number. Right? If they told us, okay, z to the power some number 2 equals this, right? Let's just make up some numbers. Then you could easily find z because z would be the base. But when z is the exponent, you have an exponential function. And exponential functions are crazy, especially the complex exponential, right? So, there's a couple different ways to go about it. I will show you my approach, which is using the polar forms, okay? I'm gonna go ahead and use the polar forms and then do a little bit of hocus pocus, mathematic, I mean natural logarithm to solve for z. Okay, ready? So we're gonna be using uh, argon plane to represent complex numbers as points or vectors. Root three plus i is gonna look something like this and it's going to have a modulus of two and it's gonna make an angle of theta, which is pi over six radians. That will be considered 30 degrees, right? And the same thing goes for the other number, but its angle is gonna be different and its length or modulus or what else could we use for that? I forgot. There was another name for it. The magnitude, I think, is gonna be a little different because it's gonna be four. That's gonna be four units and it'll make pi over three radians. But no matter what you get, you can go ahead and write these numbers in polar form. Let's go ahead and do that right now. So the first one, the modulus is two. Oh, by the way, I forgot to say the modulus here is four. I think I said it, but I forgot to write it. Now, square root of three plus i, we can write it as two times e to the power i pi over six, right? Okay, this would be fine, but pi over six is just one of the many angles, one of the infinitely many angles, because it's just the principal value. And if you add multiples of two pi, you're gonna get to the same point. Even though they represent it differently, in other words, this is multi-valued, okay? So we can add multiples of two pi. Let's go ahead and do that, plus two pi n. And then now we're gonna raise it to the power z, but before that, let's go ahead and write the right-hand side. That's gonna be four, right? And let me go ahead and set this equal to that, times e to the power i times pi over three plus two pi k. I don't wanna use the same variable because they don't have to be the same, but now I'm gonna go ahead and raise both sides to the power z, okay, ready? All right, let's go ahead and raise it to the power z and that'll equal the right-hand side. Cool, cool. Now, you have z in the exponent, how do you bring it down? By using natural log, right? So when you do the natural log, you're gonna get the following. Z times ln, two times e to the power i times pi over two plus two pi n equals ln four times e to the power i times pi over three plus two pi k. Awesome. How do you ln a product? You split it into a sum, right? So this is gonna look like the following, z times the quantity ln two plus, when you ln e to the power something, you get the power, makes sense? So it's gonna be i times pi over six 
plus 2 pi n. And the right hand side is just going to be something similar ln 4 plus i times pi over 3 plus 2 pi k. By the way, I forgot to say about n and k are integers. Okay? Cool, cool. You can also look at it from a different perspective. What is the natural log of a complex number in general? Since we use z for another purpose, let's go ahead and use w. To take the natural log of a complex number, you can take the natural log of the modulus of the number and then add the argument of the complex number multiplied by i. And this gives you another complex number. Why? Because it's in the form a plus bi. You get the idea? Remember argument w and ln absolute value of w are both real numbers. In other words, these are real valued lns. When I say ln2, I'm really talking about ln2. Okay? Cool, cool. Let's go ahead and now divide both sides by this to get z by itself. It's going to look like this. ln4 plus i times pi over 3 plus 2 pi k. And then that is divided by ln2 plus i times pi over 6 plus 2 pi n. Hmm. Do you see what I see? Well, first of all, you could go ahead and replace ln4 with ln2 squared, which can be written as 2 ln2, which is nice because it's a multiple of ln2. And then what else can we do? Well, first of all, you got to realize that I can kind of simplify this if I get rid of the fractions, right? A little bit maybe, because I have an ln2 at the bottom. I could also do this, factor out a 2, but I don't want to deal with fractions, so I will probably just multiply the top and the bottom by 6, because 6 is the least common denominator. Make sense? So we're going to be getting from here the following. 12 ln2 plus i times, since we're multiplying by 6, I kind of have to simplify things here, cross cancel. At the bottom, I'm going to be getting 6 ln2 plus i times pi plus and we multiply by 6, it's just going to be 12 again, right? So we're going to get to 12 twice because we have 2 pi. Awesome. Let's make it awesomer. How do we make that awesomer? I can go ahead and factor out a 2 in the numerator. That's going to give me 6 ln 2, which is kind of going to agree with what I have at the bottom. And then also the pi, addition of pi kind of makes sense too. The only thing that doesn't make sense is the multiples of pi. Uh, pi we're adding for the period, uh, everything else looks fine. Okay, what am I, what am I going to do with this? Can I simplify this? No, because if you notice that the expressions inside the parentheses like this one and this expression at the bottom, they're not the same. k and n, as I mean, unless k is equal to 2n, which is not always the case. But here's one thing we can do to simplify the process a little bit, right? And that's going to be an interesting case. If n and k are both 0, then we're going to get a simpler solution for z, don't you think? It's going to look like this. We're going to get 6 ln 2 plus i pi. And then, uh, let's see if we did not make any mistakes. I hope I didn't. Okay. And then when we multiply by... 2, that's going to be that. And at the bottom, if k uh, n is 0, we're going to get 6 ln 2 plus i pi. Uh-oh, we have a common factor. We can go ahead and cancel that out. Surprise, z equals 2 works. That's actually the only, only integer solution. And why does it work? Let me quickly tell you, because if you square this number, you get 2 plus 2 root 3i. That's why z equals 2 works, but that's not the only solution, but that is the only integer. Maybe that's the only real solution. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.